So, coming to the histology of salivary glands, there are three important three types of salivary glands are present. One is parotid gland, and second one is submandibular gland, and third one is sublingual gland. Parotid gland it is a serous salivary gland, and submandibular gland it is a mixed type of salivary gland, and sublingual gland it is a mucous salivary gland. So, parotid gland it is a serous salivary gland. Serous salivary gland. Submandibular gland, it is a mixed salivary gland. And sublingual gland are the mucous salivary gland. Coming to the parotid gland or serous salivary gland, the parotid gland it is covered by a capsule, and the from the capsule the various septa uh, they divide the gland into more number of lobe, uh, lobes and lobules. So the parotid gland is it is covered by a capsule. The parotid gland or serous salivary gland, it is covered by a capsule and various septa from the capsule, they divide the gland into more number of lobes and lobules. In the parotid gland, you will able to see the serous acini because it is a serous salivary gland, it consists of more number of serous acini. So, the serous acini, coming structure of serous acini, they are triangular shaped cells. The nucleus it is round and it is situated at the base and the apex of the cell consists of more number of gemogen granules. So that is the structure of serous SNA. So they are triangle shaped cells and the nucleus it is situated at the, at the base and the apex of the cell consists of more number of gemogen granules. So that is the structure of the serous SNA. So the parotid gland is a serous salivary gland. It consists of more number of serous SNA. It consists of very small human and the cells are triangular in shape and the nucleus it is situated in, in at the base. The nucleus it is situated at the base and and also the apex of the cell consists of more number of gemogen granules. So that's about the Serous SNA. So the lumen is very small. See here, the lumen. The lumen is very small and they are triangle shaped cells. The nucleus it is round and it is situated at the base. And the apex of the cell consists of more number of gemogen granules. That is the structure of serous SNA. So more number of serous SNA are seen in the parotid gland. more number of serous SNI are situated in the parotid gland. So, these are the serous SNI. Along with the serous SNI, you will able to see a very less number of mucous SNA also. Along with the serous SNA, you will in the parotid gland, along with the serous SNA, you will able to see very less number of mucous SNA also. Coming to the structure of mucous SNA. So, the mucous SNA, they have large lumen compared to the serous SNA. Serous SNA has very small lumen. Mucous SNA has very large lumen. The cells are cuboidal in shape. The cells are cuboidal in shape and the nucleus it is flattened and situated at the base and the upper part of the cell consists of more number of mucigen. The upper part of the cell consists of more amount of 
mucus mucigen granules are there that's why because of the mucus the cell the nucleus it undergoes flatten it undergoes flatten and situated at the base of the cell so that's the structure of the mucus acne so the mucus acne consists of large lumen the cells are cuboidal in shape large lumen is there the cells are cuboidal in shape the nucleus is flattened and the situated at the base because of the accumulation of the mucus on the upper part of the cell that's why the nucleus is thrown to one side in the back and the upper part of the cell consists of more number of mucigen granules so that is the structure of the mucus acne so see the acne structure is it is has a very small lumen and their triangular basal cells are there and the nucleus it is round and situated at the base and the apex of the cell consists of more number of gymogen granules that is the structure of serous acne and mucus acne they have large lumen and the cuboidal cells are there and nucleus it is flattened and it is situated at the base because because of the mucigen gland because of the accumulation of mucus the nucleus is thrown to the base and it is flattened so that is the structure of mucus acne so coming to the parotid gland along with the more number of serous acne you will able to see some mucus acne very few less number of mucus acne also so along in the parotid gland along with the serous acne you will able to see some mucus acne also but consists of four number of serous acne that is that's why it is called parotid gland is consists of serous salivary gland along with the serous acne where we less number of mucus acne are see this is the mucus acne and this is the serous acne serous acne and along with the mucus acne along with the serous acne the it also consists of intercalated ducts the parotid gland along with the mucus acne it also consists of intercalated ducts the, that means the secretions from these acne they pour into the intercalated ducts so the intercalated ducts are nothing but they are lined by simple cuboidal epithelium they are lined by simple cuboidal epithelium the intercalated ducts are lined by simple cuboidal epithelium intercalated intercalated ducts they are lined by simple cuboidal epithelium so along with the serous acne the secretions are poured into intercalated ducts which are lined by simple cuboidal epithelium from these intercalated ducts along with the intercalated ducts you will able to see the striated ducts you will able to see the striated ducts striated ducts because of the striations in appearance these ducts are called striated ducts so the coming to the one uh, one cell of striated duct we can say take the base of the cell shows basal striations so that's why it is called striated duct so striated duct cell so when we take the striated duct cell when you take the striated duct cell you will be able to see the base of the cell shows basal striations and the nucleus is situated at the top so striated ducts are also seen in along with the serous acne and on the connective tissue you, you will be able to see inter interlobular ducts interlobular ducts so in the lobe you will be able to see serous acne along with the serous acne you will be able to see the striated ducts so along with the serous acne you will be able to see the striated ducts and also intercalated ducts so this is the structure of intercalated duct this intercalated duct consists of simple cuboidal epithelium it lined by simple cuboidal epithelium so along with the serous acne you will be able to see the 
intercalated ducts which are lined by simple cuboidal epithelium and also striated ducts. Striated ducts they consist of cuboidal or columnar epithelium and they, the basal part of the cell shows striations. So we, we can see along with the serous cells the intercalated ducts and striated ducts are also seen and in the connective tissue in the connective tissue you will able to see the interlobular ducts which are now which are lined by columnar cells which are lined by columnar cell. So that's that's uh, that's about the serous salivary gland. So see parotid gland, serous salivary gland example is parotid gland because the gland it is lined by more number of serous SNA. Coming to the structure of serous SNA, you will be able to see the triangle shaped cells and the nucleus situated is round and it is situated at the base and the apex of the cell consists of more number of gemogen granules. Okay, along with the serous SNA, we will say a very few number of uh, Mucus SNA, it is having large lumen compared to, compared to the serous SNA. The mucus SNA cells are cuboidal cells and the nucleus it is flattened and is situated at the base. And the, uh, and the remaining part of the cell consists of more number of mucigen granules. That's why the nucleus it is thrown to one side and it is flattened at the base. And coming to the, the structure, histology of salivary gland, histology of parotid gland, histology of serous salivary gland, it is covered by capsule and from the capsule, the where the connective tissue extends and they divide the gland into more number of lobes and lobules. In each lobule, you will be able to see more number of serous SNA and a very few mucous SNA. Along with the serous SNA, you will be able to see the intercalated ducts which are lined by the cuboidal epithelium and also striated ducts which are lined by the simple columnar epithelium and the basal part of the cell shows striations. So that's why it is called striated duct. And in the, in the, in the connective tissue uh, divisions in the trabecule, you will be able to see the interlobular ducts. The secretions from the striated ducts, they pour into the internal interlobular ducts which are lined by the simple columnar epithelium. And uh, all the salivary glands, they are heterocrine glands because they consist of both serous SNA and mucous SNA. But anyway, if, compared, if uh, take the parotid gland, it also consists of serous SNA and mucous SNA, but the mucous uh, SNA are less compared to the serous SNA. Serous SNA are much more in the serous salivary gland. Example is the parotid gland. And coming to the submandibular gland. Submandibular gland, uh, it is uh, it is a mixed salivary gland. It consists of both serous SNA and mucous SNA in equal numbers. So, submandibular salivary gland is covered by capsule and various tabacular. They enter the gland and divide the gland into more number of lobes and lobules. You will be able to see serous SNI as well as mucous SNI and along with we will able to see the intercalated ducts also intercalated ducts nothing but they are lined by they are lined by simple cuboidal epithelium and along with the intercalated ducts we will be able to see the striated ducts they are lined by simple columnar epithelium and the basal part of the cell shows some striations and nucleus is situated at the top and the basal part of the cell shows striation and in the connective tissue trabecular you will be able to see the interlobular ducts which are lined by simple columnar epithelium and important characteristic feature of salivary gland that means a mixed salivary gland is serous devilunes are there that is the important characteristic feature of the submandibular gland that is mixed salivary gland serous devilunes what are serous devilunes so serous devilunes means the mucus SNI so this is the mucus SNI right so the mucus SNA consists of cuboidal cells and the nucleus is flat and it is situated at the base. Nucleus is flat and is situated at the base. The mucus SNA is capped by serous SNA. The mucus SNA is capped by serous SNA. We call it as serous SNA. The mucus SNA trapped by serous SNA, we call it as serous demilions. Serous demilions. So, this is the important characteristic feature of the submandibular gland. So, the mucus SNA 
are capped by cirrhosisne so that is the important characteristic feature of the submandibular gland and this is this can be serous demulus they cannot be seen in the serous salivary gland only submandibular gland that means only in mixed salivary gland only we will be able to see the serous demulus are there that is nothing but the mucous sne are capped by the serous sne so that is the important characteristic feature of the submandibular gland or mixed salivary gland okay and coming to the sublingual gland sublingual gland consists of uh, as usually it is covered by capsule where the stabiculi they enter the gland and divides into more number of lobes and lobules. In the sublingual gland, it is an example of mucous salivary gland. It consists of more number of mucous cisne. We know that mucous cisne they have large lumen and the nucleus is flattened and is situated at the base because of the mucus present in the cell. Mucigen granules present in the cell. Along with the mucous cisne, you will be able to see the intercalated dust which lined by simple cuboidal epithelium and these intercalated ducts they lined into striated ducts which are lined by columnar epithelium and the base of the cell shows some striations basal striations are seen in the base of the cell and from the stri uh, striated ducts the secretions they pour into interlobular ducts which are lined by simple columnar epithelium so the these are the mucus Submandibular gland consists of both mucus and serous cisne as well. Cisne as well as serous cisne. And serous demilunes are seen in submandibular gland only. Serous demilunes are seen in the submandibular gland only. Sublingual gland. Submandibular gland and parotid gland. So, coming to the parotid gland, parotid, there are three types of salivary glands are seen. Parotid gland is the serous salivary gland, it consists of more number of serous cisne. The serous cisne, uh, they are the uh, and triangular shaped cells, the very less human is seen, and the nucleus situated at the base and the apex of cells consists of more number of gymogen granules. Along with the serous cisne, very few less number of uh, mucous cisne are also seen. That's why all the three salivary glands they are called as uh, heterocline glands because they, because they consist of both serous cisne and mucous cisne. But in, in the uh, serous salivary gland, serous cisne uh, are more dominant, they are more in number when compared to the mucous cisne. And uh, along with the serous cisne, you will be able to see the intercalated ducts. They are lined by some. They are lined by cuboidal epithelium, um, and the, the secretions from the intercalated ducts they pour into the striated ducts, which are lined by the uh, columnar epithelium. And the base of the cell shows uh, basal striations. The secretions from the striated duct they pour into the uh, internal um, internal interlobular duct, and uh, they are lined by simple cuboidal or columnar epithelium. So that's about the uh, serous salivary gland. Coming to the submandibular gland, it is a mixed salivary gland. It consists of both mucous cisne and serous cisne. The most important characteristic feature of a submandibular gland is it consists of serous demilunes. Serous demilunes means the mucous cisne capped by serous cisne. This feature we can see only in the submandibular gland only. The mucous cisne capped by serous cisne we call it as demilunes, serous demilunes. And coming to the sublingual gland, it consists of more number of mucous cisne and very less number of serous and it consists of along with the mucus serous mucus you will be able to see the intercalated ducts, striated ducts, and interlobular ducts as well. So that's about the sublingual gland. Sublingual gland example uh, is an example of mucus salivary gland, submandibular gland is an example of mixed salivary gland, and parotid gland is an example of serous salivary gland. These are the major salivary glands situated in the head, head and neck region. So that's about the salivary glands.